everyone, we are live. I am just going to add in the lovely Alice Hendy from Ripple Suicide Prevention. Today we are going to be discussing some really important messages that we hope will help to support parents with their children's mental health. So let's see, there we go. Bear with us. Hi, Alice. Hello guys. Hi, Hi. Son. Hey darling, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. We're right on time, yeah. which is marvellous. And technology is on our side, thankfully. So let's get straight into it. I have just introduced and told our, our listeners and viewers so far what we are going to be speaking about today. So definitely sharing some important messages that we hope will help parents support their children's mental health something that i'm yeah. very passionate about being a mother to two and i wanted to start off alice by with you sharing your story because when i when i heard it a few weeks ago i it was it was it's powerful and i don't want to take anything away from from you so please introduce yourself and then go ahead and share share your story with us yeah, no problem. Thank you, Fern. Um, so lovely to, to meet you all. Thank you for watching. My name's Alice um, and I'm a founder of a charity called Ripple Suicide Prevention. And like many people, um, sadly, who work in this field, that's because unfortunately I have had experience of losing a loved one in this way. So my story came from uh, November 2020 my little brother josh was 21 years old and on the 25th of november josh decided that he didn't want to be around anymore uh, and he did uh, end up actually taking his own life life obviously just hasn't been the same for myself and my parents since that point um and i'm sure you know many people who have lost somebody in this way can resonate with that in terms of what happened next i as josh's older sister became quite obsessed with going through his phone his laptop his tablet and i was just desperate really to work out why why did he decide that he didn't want to be around anymore what was the reasons for that and when i did do that i saw that josh had actually been going on the internet and carrying out some really harmful searches on how he could end his life and ultimately it's that content that he was looking at on the internet that helped him to do that and uh that's where i, I saw a bit of a a gap there isn't anything out there that exists to interrupt anybody who might be doing something similar and that's really where i came up with the idea of ripple wow i think alice it's just it's unbelievable what you've gone on to create with ripple something that was i can imagine just so Life, life changing and, and traumatic and just the, the grieving process just so so sad like to go through that as a family but then to to then to then start something and found something such as ripple is is nothing short of amazing and obviously knowing you and knowing the work that ripple does and and continues to do i just think is just absolutely brilliant and and it can it can actually save lives can't it, it it can, yeah. So in terms of what Ripple actually is and, and what it does, it's a, a piece of technology. It can be downloaded in two different ways. The first way is as a browser extension. So it can be put on your computer, your browser of choice that you use, Google Chrome, Edge, Firefox, whatever it is you use. And once downloaded, which takes about 60 seconds to do, it will actually intervene and interrupt if somebody out there was to go on to something harmful to do with self-harm or suicide and instead signpost that person to mental health support services um, 
it can also be deployed on Wi-Fi networks as well. So we're putting Ripple on Wi-Fi at airports, football clubs, coffee shops, bars. Uh, and it means that if anybody was to search for something harmful on their phone while on the Wi-Fi, again, Ripple would intervene and signpost them to support. I find it crazy that there wasn't anything like this to intervene, yeah. to just to give someone a different perspective and a different point of view. Like, yeah. how did you, was it, was it a light bulb moment that you was like, you just felt that you need, like it, it needed, we needed Ripple? I think it came out of anger, Fern, if I'm honest with you. I, I couldn't believe that, that my brother Josh had been looking at this stuff and that nothing had come up to help him. I think that, um, that's the most shocking thing, yeah. isn't it? It's like, how on earth is there, is there content out there for people to, to serve? Like, that, that just blows my mind. And that yeah. I find so incredibly exactly. scary as a parent. Yeah. And, and, you know, how can this stuff continue to exist on the internet now and be allowed to, to exist for people to access? It's, it's just unbelievable, but it does. And yeah, I was just so angry that it, it was in existence and that Josh had been looking at it. And I just thought, you know, why, why is there nothing to, to intervene or interrupt somebody? So Ripple, it's a really simple concept. Um, and it's one which I you know, wish every day that was around four years ago, because I, I strongly believe I'd still have my brother here. So tell me, Alice, how can parents, because I've got a, a lot of my followers are parents, how, where, where do they start? How can they download Ripple? And I know that we were talking about technology when we just joined this live, and I was like, technology's mm. on our side. I think people get scared. It's like this piece of software that they're going to have to, you know, instill in their in their computers like that to me i'm just like right no no yeah how can parents download it's very simple isn't it yeah, I promise it is. Um, <laughs> I get so many people say to me, oh, no, technology, and they, they kind of run off. Um, I've tested this on my mother, and if she can download it, there's hope for everybody. So it literally takes 60 seconds to do. I've got instruction videos on the Ripple website, which is ripplesuicideprevention.com. Um, it tells you exactly how you can download it on your browser. And if you are a parent and you've got young people, uh, and children that are, are going on computers and technology and stuff, which let's be honest, most of them do. Um, this is like a safety net that they can put in place because you just don't know what your kids are looking at online and on the internet. And this is that safety net that you hope is, is never gonna have to be used, but is there just in case it, it needs to be. Um, and I would recommend every single parent downloads this tool completely free as well. Love that. So parents to children of all ages, like who, who is, who is Ripple for? Is it for teenagers? Is it for people in college, university, younger children? Yeah, good question. Honestly, it, it's really for everybody. Um, I very sadly had parents speak to me with kids as, as young as five and six that have actually had access to this kind of material on the internet, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. It's getting earlier and earlier um, within their childhood that, that people are having access to this stuff on the Internet. So we've got different versions of Ripple for different age groups. If we're talking primary age group, we've got a version of Ripple that signposts them to appropriate mental health support for that age. As they progress through to secondary school, college, university, we signpost to different uh, resources that can support them in their mental health journey. Um, Shara, obviously, being being one of them soon. Yes, so very exciting news that Shara, mine and Laurie's mental health app, has partnered with Ripple Suicide Prevention, and I am super pleased. And when when we when we met, and then obviously when you started diving to, like. Going through our, because we've got an SOS button, if a user mm. um, speaks to Sharu, Sharu's trusted guru, and it, they could speak, you could speak to Sharu about anything. It could be about, you know, your love life, to your stresses, to your success. It can be about anything. But of course, we, we wanted to include something on, on suicide. But, you know, partnering with you, you really have opened our eyes and actually given us the right tools, the right language, and I'm super, super, you know, 
pleased about our, our partnership. So yeah, that's um, that's great news. But I, want, I wanted to ask you, Alice, I've mm. got a question with that it's just popped into my mind. Going back to Ripple, let's say we've got a family yeah. of, and, and, and they've got three kids, various different ages, and they've all got their own tablets or laptops. Is it something that you can implement and, and download for the whole household or do you have to do it individually onto onto the phones the tablets mm. yeah uh, good question so at the moment it's in terms of devices it's individually but we're in um it's quite exciting actually we're in a pilot at the moment with a, an internet service provider where we're hoping to be able to add ripple to the internet basically within households so it would work a little bit like a parental control where you can switch on like a filtering service that's effectively what we're we're looking and, and hopefully aiming to do with ripple it will be like a switch on tool and it would mean that if any device connected to that wi-fi network was to search for something harmful ripple would pick it up intervene and signpost that person to support so it will hopefully get rid of that that onerous task of having to put it on each individual device going forward. But then it's, it, it, it takes how long to add it to one? Yeah, 60 one seconds. Five, 60 seconds. So, you know, it, the fact that it, it could potentially save lives, it's um, it's no time at all, no, is it? Not and have really. You had, have, have you had any, any people or families or anything reach out with, with any stories that, that Ripple has had a positive effect? Yeah, we've, we've had loads actually. So we don't track or monitor any personally identifiable information um, at Ripple. So we're not allowed to. So that means if it's implemented at a business for their employees, we wouldn't be able to go to their HR department and say that this person has just searched for X uh, on their corporate computer as an example. So with that in mind, we, we don't know effectively, you know, how many people we've helped. We know that Ripple's been triggered over 35,000 times where it's interrupted harmful searches. But we have also been approached um, directly as a charity by 29 people directly to tell us that they're still here because Ripple intervened at their most vulnerable point. And one person actually, Fern, that told me that, came up to me at the event that we met in Manchester. Oh, I don't. Yeah. I just, I have, I have to share because that's, I, I can just, I can feel how you must have felt. Like I just feel your energy when you said that. And that event was, was amazing. And it was where mm -hmm. I met you and where I heard your story. And I think um, people listening to you share your story now will, will no doubt be, be moved. And I, I, I was, you know, I was just like totally taken back, but then in complete awe of you, Alice, that I, I, I'm a big believer in you can, I mean, no, nothing, nothing in the world can, can bring your brother back. But do you feel that Ripple is, is in memory of him? Oh, totally. Everything I do with Ripple is, is for Josh and as far as I'm concerned, you know, those 29 people that have approached us to tell us that they're still here is because of Josh. Absolutely. Because, you know, we wouldn't have had this idea um, unless he unless he sadly, you know, did what he did. Um, obviously, it's too late for me. It's too late for my family. Um, and it's it's just horrendous going through the, the grief journey. I think I'll, I'll be going through that journey for a, an awful long time, to be honest. It's, it's been three years, but it, sometimes it feels like last week that it happened. But yeah, every every aspect of Ripple, what we stand for, why we're doing it is, is all based around Josh. Um, and he, hopefully he's kind of living on through through me and, and through this charity that we've set up in his memory. Oh, for sure, for sure, absolutely. I've just, um, I, I feel like every parent should, do we, do we say download, download, Ripple? Yeah. is that what, that, yeah, yeah download I, it, I'm, yeah, I know I'm, I'm going to do it straight after this live, um, although, you know, my children, and it's, it's something that you, you don't really want, want to 
to think about. And that's me just being nice. honest. So you that's don't want to almost put something in place if, but 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 we should. And the internet is a is a big it's a it's it's a it's a it's an experiment almost, yeah. isn't it? And especially with having children. Um, and being on social media and where that's going to go, I just think it's absolutely vital. So, I yeah. I can't stress how much I think that this. I think Ripple is in- incredible, and I think that that parents should absolutely check it out. After where where can they go after this live if they want to download it? So we'll put we'll put some um, some bits out on our social media so we're ripple has got their own social media um, account so we're on LinkedIn we're on Instagram obviously as of as of now uh, we're on Facebook our website is ripple suicide prevention.com um, or you can you can email us if you just email info at ripple suicide prevention.com uh, one of us will get back to you and we can support you in in anything that you might need from a, a mental health pr- perspective as you say fern you know we Talking about suicide is, is, you know, it's not not a nice topic. Nobody wants to be talking about about the topic of suicide, but unfortunately it is necessary and we need to put plans in place to ensure that this doesn't happen to to you, to your family, to your friends, Um, because I can tell you it's uh, it's not nice. It's an incredible tool and I think that, like like I said, I do believe that every parent should consider and to, to look into it and download it after this live. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, massive, huge messages and yeah, like I said, check Ripple out after this live. Now I know you've got some questions for me. I do. <laughs> but you've got some questions for me. I, feel I do, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's swap. Let's swap. okay, brilliant. So um, obviously, I initially um, kind of came across you, Fern, back in the day on Towie. Oh, so <laughs> oh, so now you've got you know you're the founder of Shira, this mental health well-being app. You're doing loads of amazing work in this space. Can you just talk me through what was the inspiration really between moving from something like Towie into this world of mental health and well-being? Because it is it is a bit of a minefield at times, isn't it? It is. It, and, and even though I, 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 when I sort of stepped into mental health and well-being, because I was like, oh, you know, lived experience. I, I'm yeah. excited to share what, what I've been through and hopefully help, help others. It is a bit of a minefield actually because it's um there's a there's a lot more to it and I'm learning as as my journey continues. But how yeah. it started was a few a few reasons really. For many years, I guess I have been sitting with the the feeling that I've wanted to start something that was mine, that I was, you know, really proud of, that was very aligned with me. And when I met Laurie, throughout the years I've always been practicing um, alternative therapies and delving into my spirituality yeah. and then when I met Laurie yeah. we actually bonded over our traumas which sounds really weird but I'd sort of been quite unlucky in love and then I met Laurie and I just thought Do you know what I'm going to lay all my cards out on the table this is me walks and all everything that I would almost like hide from some like, yeah I was getting into a relationship I was like this is me laid all my cards on the table and we shared we um like i said we bonded over sort of our highs and lows and what we've both been through and then i we completely different what what we've been through in terms of our our sort of really rubbish times and i shared what has helped helped for me over the years and of course self-development isn't linear you can't just like yes i'm healed and that's it it's a journey um, but I really, we really wanted to create a platform that would help people with their mental health that isn't going to um, overwhelm them. Because we know that actually when you want to start taking care of your, your mental health and your self-development, it can feel like, a, like we said, a minefield, like a really overwhelming space. Yeah, it can. We, we believe at Shavar, doing something each day is better than nothing. And also we know that not one size fits all. So mm. what might work for me and help me might not work for you. So we wanted to create a, a space where 
everything is in one space. So you haven't got a million different apps, an app for, for gratitude, an app for journals, an app for your, um, your podcast, an app for your affirmations. We wanted to um, collate everything and put it into one space. So it has completely simplified mental health. We have got yeah. so many wonderful yeah. features that are able to support you in your self-development. Um, and that was the start of it, really. And I, I like, I, not that I was naive, but I was like, this is a great idea. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to launch our own mental health app. This is going to be brilliant. Obviously, we launched it last year. And like you said, it is just a massive space. But, and I've, I've had to do a lot of learning. And it's, um, there's been a lot of growth and a, um, you know what it's like, like starting yeah. a company and f f finding yeah. something. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> It's hard, but um, we're very proud of it. And now we have just, we launched Sheru in January, our, um, our AI therapy companion. And then if we're going to give away some exclusives with what we've got coming up, we are eventually, you will be able to speak to your, so at the moment you could just type about anything yep. and it gives sound trusted advice backed by um, psychiatrists, scientists doctors um thousands of data sheets millions in fact and it gives sound trusted advice and then soon you'll be able to literally talk to sharu and then eventually way in the future sharu will be an avatar but i don't want to go anywhere just yet um, <laughs> Scary. So yeah, it's, yeah it's um yeah it, it, it is but it's uh, it's grown from strength to strength and I love it, you know, like for me, I wake up with a purpose. Yeah. Having our, it's like our, our, our fourth baby. Shira, yeah. Shira. So yeah, that was, that was the birth of Shira, really. Amazing. That, to be honest, what you've just said really resonates because the creation of Ripple for me absolutely has given me a purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, when coming up with the idea in the depths of despair, to be honest, when, uh, when we lost Josh, it got me up in the morning and there's still days now where it, it gets me up in the morning and it, it keeps me going. So yeah, completely get that. Yeah. So you're, you're obviously a parent to the lovely Sunday and Finty. Um, what do you think parents can do? What role can parents play in actively supporting their children's mental health, no matter what age they are, because everything can can impact on on how a child's feeling anything and everything really so what can parents do do you think from your perspective i think if you're a parent i well because i'm a parent mm. on my social media all that seems to fly up with the algorithms is gentle parenting this you need to be doing this you need to speak to your child like this to, to prevent this or to make sure that they're this. Yeah. If you want a nice, calm child, you need to be calm. And it, is, it, it, can, it can be really daunting because yeah. I don't know about anyone else, but I am just trying my best. Like to, to get Sunday on school to on, on time is like a, is a success. Like if we're on time, that's a success. So I know that parenting, is, I think it, it can be the toughest job mm -hmm. in the world. And then being mindful of mental health and especially where I'm a big advocate of mental health, that's also really scary as well because I've been in therapy for, and I hate that like in therapy, and I know we're going to come on to this, but I've been seeing my therapist for over, probably about six years now. Okay. Um, six years. And whilst I'm speaking things through with my therapist, I'm also in the back of my mind. It's, it's fascinating speaking with the therapist and then having a child because you're like oh, oh my god i don't want what's happening now in life to sort of end up with yeah. me being in, in therapy so um again i'm mindful of that but in terms of tools or tips and tricks an exercise that i love doing with sunday of an evening because you know after school she's tired and i really do feel like children at school suppress their mm. themselves they can't just fully be themselves so when they walk through the front door they're like oh and it's just like they almost like dump all of their like right now i can be myself and they're tired sunday's definitely like that so i'm not probing her with too many questions what i like to do is definitely like first time or when we get into bed and i actually got this from her teacher is that instead of like how was school is because in our household i really want sunday i want i want it to 
to hold the space for her that she knows that she can talk to me about anything. And of course, our children aren't going to speak to us about, mm. about anything. No, of course. Them. I want her to know that she can. So instead of saying like, how was school? It's like, did anything make you laugh today? I went to my gym class the other day in my Birkenstocks and I looked down and I was, and I told her that and she was laughing. I said, so don't know, you couldn't believe it. I held up the shoes and we were laughing and that sort of opened her to say, well, this happened that made me laugh. So now yeah. we're, talk, we're actively talking about her feelings. Then I would say, is there anything that, that you really loved that happened today at school, at home? Like what made you feel good? And then I said, Is, was there anything that made you feel a little bit sad or did you get angry? Um, and then she'll ask me and, or if she's like, sometimes she wouldn't, she'll go, don't want to do it. Because I'm like, right, let's, let's see. The and she's like, no. Um, she's like a teenager, even though she's six. And then, I'll, and then I will say, and then at the end, if there's anything that you want to talk to me about, you can talk to me. So it's. It's having those conversations and knowing and creating the space that your child can, can openly speak to you. Whether they do or don't, you've made that step. So that's something that I love doing with Sunday is just speaking about your feelings and what made you feel good, what made, made you not feel so good. And so definitely having those, those types of conversations with you. But um, yeah, no, my... the, 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 other, the other day, Alice, I've got to tell you, this, I, I'm not sure if this is the right thing or not, because <laughs> in, the end, in the end, we actually both started hysterically laughing. She went, she, she, she's quite vocal someday. Like, I know when she's angry. I know when she's frustrated. She's like, ah, oh, she does that noise. And I was like, right, get that pillow, right? Get the pillow. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of this noise. I was like, get the pillow. <laughs> And I hold it in my and I go, yeah, like that. And she looks at me like, what are you doing? I was like, do it with me, do it with me, wrestle with the pillow. And, she, and, it, and we were both doing it. I thought if anyone was to see us, they'd be like, what is going on? I was like, have you, have you released that anger now? Yeah. If you feel angry, you know, I, I'm, I, I can't say that you can do this at school, but actually this morning in the car, because she was getting fussy about her hair and she was getting stressed out. And I and, and breath work is something that we've got on Shira. I was like, let's take a breath. Yeah. Let's take a breath. It can completely change your your energy. So they're little techniques that I like to do with Sunny Day. Um I yeah. can't say that she's always receptive to it, but um yeah, it's 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 been it's been insightful. And to be honest, I'm learning learning as I go as well because She's she's my first child, so every when we arrive at different different chapters and different challenges, then we're we're both learning together. So yeah, yeah, they're little little exercises that I thought would be uh, would be handy for people to to hear because it's something that you can actually do. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, and if all else else fails, get a pillow, right? <laughs> Perfect. There you go. You you yeah, mentioned we can do um you mentioned Fern in the in your in your kind of answer to me there that you um go to therapy. Um I do as well. Yeah. I do as well and I, I've been several several times, particularly since Josh has um has passed away. Mm -hmm. Um quite often saying that you're in therapy is almost seen as a negative people are people can be ashamed of that they don't want to let people know that they're going to therapy they don't want to tell people that they're having counseling for for something that they're trying to work through um in actual fact i mean we both know that it's it's a positive and it's a strength actually to be talking about that so openly mm. why do you think it's seen so so negatively because it's gold isn't it really oh oh it is and I have been so lucky. I think it's all about relationships. And I have been so fortunate yeah. to have a, a, an amazing relationship with my therapist. I've only ever seen one. And I have been with her. I don't really know what to say. With her. Mm -hmm. having, having therapy sessions with her. And I've committed to that for six years of my life. And yeah. I had this conversation with my mum the other day, actually. Like, when would I stop? And I'm not sure... I'm, I'm definitely, it's not that I'm not ready to now, it's so part of my life that I, I don't want to stop right now. It's very healthy for me and it's, yeah. um, I see it as like going to the gym but for my mind. It's something that I... And, I yeah, I, and six, I really six years. 
yeah. six years is a, is a long time to, to be a part of your routine as well isn't it so yeah. it's, it's yeah. hard to, to stop something like that exactly it's very part of my routine but you said like almost like there's a stigma around it or that it there should is, be yeah. a secret when i first said that i was having a therapist or seeing a therapist publicly i think it was on a loose women interview um in lockdown over over zoom it was uh, back in 2020 and it went everywhere in the press mm. and i was just like wow and um, i knew that there was that sort of like oh yeah in therapy and i think in the uk america i don't think it's like this and um, because everyone's like yeah i've got you know i've got my therapy session and it's so like people are very open about it in the states but here it's almost deemed like there's something wrong with you or you've you've had a breakdown and um I want to break down those taboos and, 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 that, and the stigma around therapy because for me it's been a very positive experience. Now, we know since launching Shira is that therapy isn't accessible to, to, to everyone for, uh, for many different reasons. You know, finances, it can be very expensive if you go privately. There's a long waiting list if you go by the NHS. Yeah. Um, you know, pride, especially with men after speaking with Laurie, who's like, um, you know, for, for, for guys, it, it's a big step to go and be a therapist and, 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 and for females as well. Um, but I think women find it easier to, to, to be, to, to open up about their emotions and their feelings. So pride, time as well. And like I said about that relationship, you really need to connect with your therapist. So that was really why we created our AI therapy companion to sort of, to, to, overcome these hurdles yeah so people have still got someone to talk to and to have that voice of reason to um and you'd be completely amazed at because it's almost like oh, like an ai therapy companion like i even found it difficult to get my head around but when you start speaking to sharu it's incredible the advice and how different you can feel sometimes you just need to dump something just somewhere get it out yeah just, just to have that pause to be like oh Okay, I've cleansed that. So, um, but yeah, in terms of therapy, it's been a very positive experience for me. And actually, I I have I'm not saying I'm a completely different person, but I have evolved so much over the years, and I I definitely put that down to therapy. I yeah. re respond in, instead of um, reacting. I don't yeah. react to a situation anymore. I will take a beat. I will sleep on it, and I will process it obviously therapy teaches you to process your emotions so i see it as a really positive healthy experience yeah i totally with you on that and um from my perspective you know going through loss like this there's so many additional feelings that you have to try to navigate it's not the same as losing somebody to natural causes you've got all of the additional things like guilt anger yeah shock you know there's so many additional bits that you've got to try and navigate through but therapy for me has been um a bit of a godsend if i'm honest and as you say sometimes all you need is to just get it out um and actually tell somebody about about how you're feeling do you think also sorry go on firm I, I, I was just going to say alice like how are you doing now you said three, three years in with, without josh like how how are yeah you? um I have good days and bad days, like like everybody does. If I now have a bad day, I have been equipped with the toolkit yes. to to deal with it more effectively. Yeah. Back in the day, when I, so it's it, stuff like you've mentioned, things like breath work, yeah. um, it, it, and again, this this helps me, but it might not help everybody else. I personally like um, taking my dogs for a walk, putting a film on, getting a pizza, nice. and and just yes. sit, sitting and yes. sitting and watching a film with, with a pizza. Other people, you know, they like doing the ice baths or going for a run or, you know, anything it's anything fine. that works works yeah, for you yeah. is is, no, I, is fine, I'm, you know. But I'm laughing because I'm like. I start watching a film and getting a pizza. Yeah, I exactly. I know, I, would, I, know, no, I but... know what everybody would really pick, and it would definitely be my one. Um, but for the, the more healthy individuals that are watching this, then, you know, it, 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 different things work for different people. But for me, that, that's yeah, just what helped me. Yeah. 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 I love that. 
that. Yeah, so but it is it is still hard, and every day is is um, mm. is hard. There's there's not a day goes by that I don't you know think of him and and wish he was still around. Mm. Um, so yeah, it is still tough, mm. definitely. And uh, sorry, I, I I interrupted you there. Yeah, I was gonna. gonna... I was going to ask you with regards to your therapy that, that you've been on, how has that helped with regards to your relationship with Laurie? Because you've mentioned as well that he's also had some traumas and you've bonded with him over over those when, when you first met. Mm. How, is, how has going through therapy kind of helped your relationship with, uh, with Laurie and kind of dealing with all of those, those ups and downs that you've both had in your life? I think that there are for me has made me more understanding of other people's behaviours. Right. We are all indi individual and what might affect me in a certain way won't affect someone else. And I think that not just, just Laurie, it's like with, with everyone. And I think some, sometimes I might get frustrated or upset over something and that you want somebody else to feel your pain yeah this, this is just me and I'm like but how can't they see my point of view whether that's Laurie whether that's friends whether that's someone that you have I don't know had a disagreement with and you're like but how can't they see my point or why can't they feel the same way we just don't because we're wired differently and that's what I said like not one size fits all and what your tool, your toolkit might not help me. So yeah. It's about understanding that we're all individual and being mindful and respectful that actually they might not be there yet or they might not be sort of, um, I'm not saying emotionally as intelligent as someone who's in therapy, but it's like we're, 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 we're all individual and it's just being respectful that they are going to respond differently to how I do. And I think with Laurie as well, we are we're completely different as, yeah. as, as individuals as, as people and sometimes i mean alice we we live together we have uh, we have children together we're co-parenting together and we've got a business a, a tech startup together it's a lot it's a lot it is a lot oh. so we we need therapy for that alone do you know what i mean like we, <laughs> we, need, we need it just to get by um just day-to-day -day life but uh, yeah i think it, it, it sort of therapy gives you that um for me as well it's boundaries it's like it, and that's a huge one people's boundaries yeah yeah absolutely huge uh, yeah boundaries is is a massive one because you know when i first lost josh um i had really mixed reactions from my friends to be honest so some of them were uh, amazing and would you know be leaving me lasagnas and shepherd's pies outside my front doorstep to, so that i can i'm eating and trying to look after myself others just didn't know what to say and therefore said nothing mm -hmm. and just completely went off the radar because they were scared about about what to say. Others wanted to, you know, go out to the cinema or go out for dinner when it just happened. And it's just, you know, not something I, I wanted to do. So it's put, putting those boundaries in place for me right at the beginning of saying, look, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm up for doing at the moment. This is what I'm not up for doing at the moment. It is OK yeah. um, to do that and and to actually make sure that you're you are trying to put yourself first for your own for your own mental health and well-being to be honest because again that is also a minefield because people have got such different ideas of what boundaries are yeah. um some people don't know what they are some people do yeah and then and then because you don't want to offend someone do you? exactly like, like, yeah of course not i mean i've always struggled with boundaries it's like like <laughs> i've always been like oh no but like because i want to like appease people or like not 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 let them down or like See, yeah. even if I was like suffering, but they had different ideas of how they, how I should be healing. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But I think boundaries are so healthy, so incredibly healthy. And actually, it's it's something you know. You said to me earlier, how can we, um, how how can we support our children's mental health or sort of include it in their, in their life? And actually, I, I'm definitely going to teach my children, my my girls, to you don't have to give your all no. to everyone. No, hold hold 
hold some cards close to your chest to protect yourself like that's okay and boundaries is, is something that i have unfortunately learned the hard way in um in life um <laughs> yeah but um yeah anyways so uh, boundaries has been has been really yeah really yeah good to I've define them already. definitely exactly. so look we're we're approaching the the end of our conversation so um you asked me how can people get more information about ripple so i'm going to ask you now how do people get more information about shara um if if their parents watching this that want to download this for themselves or to get support for their kids what can they do so thank you so much for asking me that so we are on instagram shara s-h-o-o-r-a-h or shara.io and we're on all of the app stores so check us out Send us a little DM if you have any questions, if you want to find more out about our features and we'll be gladly uh, there to answer any of them. And so will uh, Sharu as well, by the yeah. sounds of it. Sharu <laughs> answer the questions. <laughs> oh, I'd love this, Alice. Thank you so much for, for you know, showing up and sharing your, your powerful story. and. Um, and just letting letting people know about Ripple, I just felt, I said it on my stories, when I heard your story, when I heard what the work that Ripple, like what Ripple does, I was like, people, everyone needs to know about this. Everyone needs to download it and have it on their, their tablets, laptops. So I'm so, so pleased that we've been able to make this live work. Thank you. So Thank much. you. I think, I think you're amazing. I think you're so, so amazing. Thank you for saying that. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Alice. All right. Have thank you. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.